But like, I'm the oldest I've ever been. So like, to me, I've been around. Like, I've noticed little things getting older. Like, now I can't get hard by just like looking at a picture of a girl. Yeah, I can't do it anymore. At first I thought I was gay. I was like, oh no, I'm gay now. I was like, that's what this means. No, I didn't know like when you get older, you can't just like get hard. I didn't know you have to like bat it around and get it going, you know? You just be able to get hard, any picture of a girl. She didn't have to be naked, as long as she was kind of like this. Like I could always just jerk off. I'm from Staten Island, I'm sorry, everybody. You guys don't know what Staten Island is. It's, uh, it's like New York's abortion that lived. Like it's just, it's this awful place where dreams die. And um, I'm from there. Like the only good thing we have are women sex offenders. I think that's awesome. It's actually why I still live there. If I turn on Fox News and the guy's like, woman rapes three kids and he's 13 to 17 in the woods. I'm like, mom, I'm going camping. <laughs> you got that Boy Scout outfit from third grade? It won't fit you. That's the point. I noticed something. I don't know if you're an avid porn user, but online, there's no new porn unless you pay for it. So I've been watching some of the classics. No problem. I could watch some classics. Yeah. But I noticed something that I don't like in porn because I've been watching the same porns over and over. I'm noticing new things, you know? Like, this is something I really don't like. I don't like when male porn stars moan. Yeah, what the fuck's up with that? It's like you're a professional. Act like you've been there before. Yeah. And you know, as a male porn star, uh, like guys are jerking off to this, so why would you moan so loud? You know how distracting that is? Have some fucking respect for your fans, seriously. <laughs> well, I was watching this porn the other day and a guy was like, oh yeah, fuck, fuck yeah. And I was like, what a fucking weirdo. I'm like, can you shut the fuck up so I can fucking come please, you fucking weirdo? I don't make any noise when I have sex. Zero, gentlemen. <laughs> Nothing, please and thank you the whole way through. <laughs> I don't even make noise when I come. When I come, I'm just kind of like. <laughs> yeah, like I just had an epiphany or something. <laughs> like, oh, my keys, they're my jeans. Like, that's how I come. <laughs> don't forget to turn the oven off. That's how I literally come. If I'm drunk, I'll yell out one thing when I come. I'll tell you what it is, okay? There's one thing I'll yell out when I'm drunk when I come, this is the one thing, okay? I don't know if any of you are familiar with the film uh, 101 Dalmatians. <laughs> there is a scene in 101 Dalmatians when Jeff Daniels' his puppy gives birth, okay? And this lady taking care of the puppies, she's like, there's 14 puppies. One of them died. There's supposed to be 15, but there's 14. And Jeff Daniels being the goddamn genius of an actor that he is, <laughs> out of the corner of his eye notices the 15th puppy that they thought was dead is starting to wiggle, so it's alive. And he looks at the lady and he goes, no, not 14. 15! 15 puppies! So I yell that when I come now. Which is a huge step up from sorry. Yeah! How are you guys, you good? I'm uh, very depressed, everybody. I am, I just turned 20 and um, it's over. It's done, I just moved out of my mom's house. And I've realized something. I'm gonna fucking die. I'm not gonna make it. I'm not, I thought about it. I'm 6'3", I'm 140 pounds. I have a problem with wind. My friend's are like, you wanna go out? I'm like, you gotta check the forecast first. I might lose a friend. When I used to live with my mom, I just thought she was annoying. I thought she was annoying and she cock-blocked my masturbation time. That's all I know. 
Because she was the room next door. So every time I would get it going, I would like hear her sneeze and it would throw off my timing. And I'm like, I can't finish now. Mommy's sick. She might need these tissues. I miss living in my mom's house. When I used to live in my mom's house, I used to be able to jerk off in my bed, and then the next day, it would be gone. <laughs> now I live on my own. It just stays there. It's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere until I move. I don't have the same fears I do now, though, jerking off by myself than when I live in my mom's house. Because I used to jerk off in my mom's bathroom, you know, because it smelled nice and there was lotion. <laughs> And I just realized now I was jerking off to my mom's scent. So that's fucking weird. Anyway. Uh, just hit me. No, but it was I, my biggest fear, because I used to jerk off in her bathroom all the time, and sometimes I would finish on the toilet seat. And my biggest fear is that one day she would just sit on it and get pregnant. Every day I would clean my bathroom. My mom had no idea what was going on. She was just like, you're such a good boy. <laughs> and I'm like, you have no idea what I'm trying to prevent right now. <laughs> I had to move out. I had to move out of my mom's house. It got really weird. Uh, she bought me condoms. All right. And it's fine if you're a mom and you want to buy your son condoms. It's just a way to do it. You know, if you want to get your son condoms, just get them and leave them in his room. Don't tell him. He'll find them. That's the way they do it. That's not what my mom did. My mom did something really weird, right? It was really weird. I was still staying at her house at the time, and it was like 11.30 at night, and she just barged in. She didn't text, knock, just barged in, and she was just like, hey, I got something for you. And I was high, so I was like, what the fuck? This is a little weird. And I swear to God, I turned on the lights. This is what she does. She has it, she had it behind her back and she pulls out a 40 pack. And I swear to God, this is what she does. She goes, I got every kind for my baby boy. <laughs> and then she winked at me. And I was like, you're giving the fucking weirdest vibe I've ever received in my life, mom. I know you're single, I'm not the guy. I think it's time to move out. This is really weird. And she got me the 40 pack. I wanted to be like, who do you think your son is? I didn't even get to use them. I just opened all of them and left them around their house. So she would find them and think I was cool. I did. She found one the other day. She called me. She was like, I found another condom. I'm like, yeah, you did. That's your boy. I'm a hypochondriac. I always worry about my dick. I don't know about anybody else. But I'm always worried about my dick. How are you? Do you always worry about your dick, dude? It's good. It's good? Oh, oh aren't you the fucking most confident man in the world? Huh. Fucking Mr. Dos Equis over there. <laughs> hey, ever worry about your dick? Nah, I'm fine, man. Oh, fuck you, dude. How's that? <laughs> Actually, never in my life. My dick is perfect. I always worry about my dick. I always freak out for no reason. Like, um, here's, here's how I thought that you could get something. Like, uh... I'm sure every guy can relate to this. This ruins my day whenever it happens. Whenever I have to take a shit in a public place and my dick touches the toilet seat, it ruins my day immediately. I'm like, oh my God, I just got everything in this place. My dick starts like coiling back. It's like it knows what it did. And it's all, I'm like, no, fuck you. I actually told my doctor that once. I was like, before you take a look, I think I know what it is. I'm like, you ever take a shit in a McDonald's and your dick touches the toilet seat? I think that's where I got this from. And he's like, that's not possible. And I was like, well, you're the doctor. I'm just trying to help. <laughs> I like going to free clinics because they know what's up. You know, nobody goes to a free clinic for chemo. Everybody goes to a free clinic because they had fun yesterday. <laughs> I like to go to this free clinic in Brooklyn because it's very well run. That's right. You could yelp other things besides food. <laughs> and I went in and it's very well run. The first thing, they don't waste any of your time. They, it's great. The first thing they do, they prick your finger to test you for AIDS. They give you a number, and then you sit with everybody else. And then while you wait to see the doctor, they'll call your number, tell you your AIDS result. Yeah, it's like bingo. It's sick. It's fucking best establishment in Brooklyn. 
Maybe I'm not painting a good picture enough. A, a nurse will literally come out to the waiting room and be like, 33, no. <laughs> and 33's like. <laughs> 34 is in the corner like, fuck. There's been seven no's in a row. for a yes. I've never seen a yes yelled out. I've never seen a yes yelled out. Like, I've never been there and a, and a lady's been like, uh, 34? Yeah, you have eights. <laughs> like, that's never happened. I don't know what they would do. What do you think they would do? I'm sure they would just, like, take you into a room and throw you a Magic Johnson jersey and be like, welcome to the team, bro. <laughs> Go on, be positive. Don't be negative. I just dropped out of college. Anybody else? Yeah, I, uh, I dropped out because I was dorming and uh, I didn't like dorming. That's it. I, I didn't speak to any of my roommates. And I think it's because like the first morning we, we all woke up with a boner and we were like, this isn't for any of us. One time we ran out of toilet paper and we just didn't get any. But everybody took a shit every day and nobody knew what they used. It was like this don't ask, don't tell policy that we had. One time a roommate came out of the bathroom with one sock. I was like, fuck, we need toilet paper. Holy shit. This is getting real. I have no game with women because uh, I went to an all boy Catholic school which is like an educational cock block. That's just, it's not very fun. Here's something that should never happen in an all boys school. Uh, don't get an erection. There's no excuse for that at all. It just shouldn't happen because there's priests there. And priests are like sharks when you get a cut in the water. I got my priest to stop hitting on me though. It was easy. I introduced him to my little brother. I got an A. Anybody here ever do shrooms? Like, I'm afraid to do drugs because I love them. Like, whenever I'm about to do a drug, I need to do it with a friend. That way, like, if I die, he dies too. For some reason, that would be so much better for my mom to find out. Like, if two of us died, it's not as bad as just me. Does that make sense? No, I'm serious, because if I just died, my mom's like, what a fucking drug addict. But if it's me and another friend, they'll be like, that bad influence, Ryan. <laughs> oh, he said he was no good for my son. <laughs> I picked my friend Ryan to do shrooms with me. My friend Ryan, some of you might know, some of you might not. Um, he's this six foot five, 250 pound black dude from Flatbush, Brooklyn. Okay, he's been to jail a bunch of times for real shit, not for like hopping a turnstile, for like murder, okay? He didn't do it, and yeah. He's nice to me. So I, before I do a drug, I usually Google the best and worst thing that could happen. Probably not a good idea, but again, I'm not a smart person. Let me tell you how not smart I am, okay? This is how not smart of a person I am. I thought Chicago was a state until a week ago. Uh, not done. The only reason why I found out Chicago is not a state is because I was in Chicago doing a show, came out, said, wonderful to be in the state of Chicago. <laughs> Nobody said anything. Nobody said anything until the end of the show. So I did a whole show with state of Chicago confidence. <laughs> That's how fucking stupid I am. So I looked up, I was like, what's the best thing that could happen to you on shrooms? Best review I saw was, I did shrooms, I saw the world, and I feel like I'm a better person now. And I was like, hey, that's a great review. <laughs> 200 likes, nice. Reliable. Worst review of shrooms, don't do them, jumped out of my window, 500 likes. I was like, fuck, I have two windows. So there's doubly the chance. 
So I got Ryan in my apartment, and I got a guy, a man, to come over to install child locks on my windows. And he got to my house and he was putting in the child locks and he was like, oh my God, this is so sweet. When's the baby due? And I was like, there's no baby. Me and him are doing shrooms. <laughs> so we do shrooms and then nothing happens for about an hour. And you know when people do drugs or drink and they, and they just brag about how not fucked up they are and it's the most... Annoying thing ever. I, to me, it really bothers me whenever someone's like, drank 14 beers, I don't feel shit. And it's like, oh, maybe you're autistic then because you should be fucked up completely, to be honest with you. So we were getting a little mad that it wasn't working, so we turned on this movie with Al Pacino and Christopher Walken. It's a new movie, so just know they already look scary. I'm on my phone for like 20 minutes just scrolling. And you know how when you scroll and it lo the little loading bar comes up so the next page can come up? There was no loading bar. There was just pages coming up. So I was just like, oh wow, my Wi-Fi is sick. Like I was very into my Wi-Fi. I was like Netgear 32, killing it right now. <laughs> Fucking flying through everything, no loading bar. I was very excited. Ryan goes, yo, is Al Pacino orange? And I'm scrolling and I looked up and he was, but it didn't bother me. I went back on my phone. I was like, yeah, he is. Really bothered Ryan, because now Ryan was hiding under his Snuggie, shaking. And he said, yo, bro, call me when this is over. <laughs> so I was freaking out. I was like, already the safest guy that I picked to do shrooms with is already hiding under my Snuggie. I'm fucked. I was sort of panicking and freaking out. I can't do this alone, you know? I can't do anything alone. So I told Ryan, I was like, listen, I'm gonna go downstairs, tell the doorman we're very high on shrooms in case anything happens. <laughs> to which Ryan goes, why the fuck would you do that? And I said, so he knows. <laughs> it makes no sense, but at the time, it made so much sense to me. He's like, why would you do that? I was like, why the fuck would he do that? So he knows. <laughs> Guy with the questions. <laughs> so then I got in the elevator, it went down one floor and it stopped, the alarm went off. And I was freaking out. I was like, fuck, I'm fucked. I, I, I need to get out of here. So I started punching the elevator, trying to open it. I was freaking out. I was staring at my fist. I was like, if it ever would happen, it would happen now. Wolverine, come on, one time. <laughs> Wolverine, one time. It didn't happen, obviously. I wouldn't be here right now. I got downstairs. Okay, elevator doors opened. I was too afraid to get out because I was afraid it wouldn't go back up. Makes no sense, but at the time, huge fucking problem. Like, I, I was like, what if it don't go back up? So I just stuck my head out to the doorman and I was like, hey, it's Pete, third floor. If anything happens, me and my friend Ryan were really high on shrooms. And then he looked at it like this, and then the door just fucking closed <laughs> in his face. I got back upstairs into my apartment, two windows open, no Ryan. <laughs> to which I said, I fucking knew it. I knew this would happen, 500 people liked it. And then Ryan goes, yo, my bad about the windows. I'm in the bathroom. I was like, all right, okay. Now, normally, I don't care when my friends are in the bathroom for over an hour. And I don't ask what's going on in there. But we were both on shrooms, and it was over an hour. So I was like, hey, Ryan, what the fuck's going on in there? And he was like, bro, you gotta get in here. <laughs> Ryan's been to jail. So I was like, is this jail Ryan? Or is this my friend Ryan that we all know and love? 
I get in there. This is a true. This is exactly what's going on. He's naked in his boxers, flexing, having the fucking time of his life, just flexing. He's like, uh, yeah, uh huh, yeah, yeah. I'm like, what's up, bro? Like, what's going on? And he's like, I'm the Hulk. And I didn't know what he was talking about. I was like, I was like, what do you mean you're the Hulk? He goes, don't you see? I'm green. I'm the very first Black Hulk. And he kept flexing, and I was like, I don't, I don't get it. And he was like, look in the mirror. This is the only time that I tripped. I looked at Ryan like this, looked at him into the mirror. He turned green into the mirror. And I was like, oh my God, you are the Hulk. Congratulations, this is sick. So then I got a little cocky, and I was like, perhaps I'm also the Hulk. And I took my shirt off, and I just looked very sick. I was like, I need to get out of here immediately. Ryan gets on the couch. We're watching, we're about to watch the rest of this movie. The second we hit play, it's a scene where Al Pacino comes out from behind a corner and goes, hello! And we were like, fuck that. That's the scariest thing I've ever seen in my life. So we shut it off. It was horrifying. Seeing a 75-year-old orange person go, hello! was fucking terrifying. So now me and Ryan are both high on shrooms, uh, shirtless under our Snuggies, just shaking, <laughs> holding each other. And then my mom texts me, okay? My mom sends the worst possible text you could send when someone's violently high on shrooms. She sends me, uh, Pete, just wanna let you know I'm so proud of you. I love everything you're doing. You make such smart decisions and dad would be very proud. And then I just started crying. I was like, oh man, my mom's all proud. I'm on shrooms. I wasn't even the Hulk. Like it was just this whole fucked up, a bad day. And then Ryan goes, shut the fuck up. And you know when you're crying and your friend don't care, it makes you cry more. When you're like, uh, and your friend's like, uh, and you're like, uh, like, Please care. So it made me cry more. I was like, what do you mean? Like, wh who does that? And he was like, bro, seriously, shut the fuck up. I'm gonna punch you in the face. And I was like, well, uh, why can't you just be my friend? Why can't you just be there for me? And he's like, cause I miss my mom too. And then he started crying and then we both <laughs> held each other and cried under my Snuggie. And then the shroom trip was over and then Ryan did the funniest thing I've ever seen anybody do. Um, he took the Snuggie off and he dabbed his eyes with it. And then he looked at me and he went, Whew. yo Pete, shrooms, incredible.